being here this morning. We had one of these lessons in Sunday school this morning called uh, Face and Death. That sounds like a real uplifting lesson, doesn't it? <laughs> but one thing we know as Christians is we do have a land in glory land, don't we? Place in glory land. We don't have to worry about death, do we? All right, well, thank you so much for being here. We still got some folks missing, uh, but they, I know some of them are going to be back next week. Uh, be in prayer for some of them that have been sick. Dan and Chris have been under the weather for the last three weeks, but I think they're about to get there, so hopefully we'll have them back with us next week. We got some people traveling, so be in prayer for them. Uh, don't forget the fifth Sunday singing. That's next Sunday at 6 p.m., uh, there's already several that signed up, so if you want to, if you want to sing, we'll just get a hold of Margaret. She'll work you in the itinerary there. Uh, ladies' Bible study begins Wednesday, September the first, 9:30, and Teen Kids, believe it or not, is already back September the first at 5:30. We'll be in prayer for both of these. So uh, our revival is uh, three short weeks away be here before you know it. Uh, be in prayer for the cherries. If you've never heard them, you're missing a treat. They will be here, both of them. And you talk about using this amen sign. He'll make you say amen. Only Brother Lynn. He will. He'll will make you say amen. So be in prayer for them. There's, uh, there's a deal in your bulletin there that you might want to look at that will help you that. Uh, I'm confused about the, are we having a fellowship Wednesday or Tuesday? Tuesday. Tuesday. What are we going to do Wednesday? Just going to kiss them by. So I see. Okay. Tuesday night will be a fellowship supper or fellowship activities. They're calling it finger food, whatever that is. Finder. Be here and you can get some of it. I don't know what the finger food is, but I guess it'll be good. Uh, that revival will start every evening at 7. So be here for that. It'll be good. You'll enjoy it. Remember those in prayer on the back. Uh, quite a few there. Keep them in mind. <coughs> Sir, somebody say something. All right. Uh, Becky and Robert Edinger have birthdays. One's August the 6th, which is already passed, and then Robert's is August the 23rd, which is tomorrow, I believe, August the 23rd. All right. Anybody got anything else? All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Mike. I think he covered uh, most of it there. And I just need to follow up on a couple of things. Uh, in your bulletin, it says revival schedule for that Sunday morning. It starts at 10.30. That should be 10, 10.45. We'll make that change there. Not 10.30, but 10.45. And uh, we do have a goal that the church has set for the Reach Texas missions offering that will be taken up next month, every Sunday of next month. And that's uh, going to be $750 that's uh, the go. So be praying about that. Be looking at what you'll be able to, to contribute and give toward uh, the Texas missions next month. Now, uh, notice in your bulletin it says, let's pray for revival. And you've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So there's a little something to pray concerning the revival. And just be in prayer each day uh, for the charities and uh, everything on that particular, this particular week is going to be involved then. Next week, uh, we'll be playing a little differently, and the third week, we'll play a little differently too. But uh, give you a little guideline, kind of help you through uh, uh, the next few weeks to be playing with the revival. Now, also, there's nothing in the bulletin about it, but we all, I think we all understand that there's been a resurgence of the COVID uh, virus, and uh, uh, of course, I, I had my mask on this morning. Primarily, I'm, what I'm trying to just be a little cautious until I talk to my doctor Tuesday. And uh, uh, he may tell me to be more cautious, and he may say I may not need to. I don't know. But uh, anyhow, we know that the virus is out there. 
a Palestine school district up there. They're having a big deal right now. A lot of students are having, the, they've got the virus. Uh, you're probably hearing that not only unvaccinated people, but vaccinated people are getting the virus. And while we may feel like we're secure because we've been vaccinated, I just heard of a lady this past week, she uh, was vaccinated, a nurse that works in Tyler, and she got COVID and she was dead Wednesday. And so just because you've been vaccinated doesn't mean that you're safe and secure. Who knows what to believe, amen? I mean, you know, they tell you all this stuff and you just don't know what to believe. But we're being cautious. We do have a table out here again uh, for, you know, you sanitize or some masks if you feel like you need to use them. Use your own judgment in that. If it gets really bad, we'll put posters up on the glass again. But uh, uh, I'm, I'm just saying this is evolving. So we don't know what's coming in the next two, three weeks. We're anticipating having this Tuesday night uh, fellowship time with the cherries. And by the way, uh, we moved it to Tuesday so that you folks would be able to have time to talk with them in fellowship. On Wednesday night, Paul is in here trying to get all of his equipment together, trying to get it loaded up. He won't be leaving Wednesday night. He'll leave that next, early that next morning. But they would be able to get back to the fellowship hall and have time for anybody that might want to visit with them. And so Tuesday night, we felt like it would be a little bit better time to have a little uh, fellowship time. So uh, we're trusting that that's going to be okay and that we won't have to call that off. Uh, I'm just telling you that that's just some of the things that are going on. Uh, so anyhow, just be aware that this thing is, is actually evolving. Now, there was also uh, the past couple of bulletins I think we had under our looking ahead. Uh, it was mentioned that we were going to have a business meeting on September the 26th, and we're moving that to October the 3rd. That business meeting will be on October the 3rd instead of September the 26th. And so all the issues of a new budget and having the officers, teachers uh, installed and all that, no big deal. Just it starts October 1st, you take care of October the uh, 3rd. And I think that's going to be a little bit uh, better since the 26th will be my last Sunday here. So uh, uh, we're, we're going to do it that way. One other thing before we go, Lord, in prayer. Franklin Graham is calling for today to be a special day of prayer for the Afghanistan people. And we got a mess over there. It's a real big mess. And we've got our brothers and sisters in the Lord that know Jesus over there. And many of them are about to probably suffer martyrdom for Jesus. They're going to be killed. The Taliban, they, they don't have mercy on Christians now. You need to understand that. Matter of fact, I, I got a, an email. I think it was from uh, Voice of the Martyrs. And it said that uh, the Taliban has already sent notes and letters to many of these Christians. And, they, and it says something like, we know who you are and we're coming after you. So when you think about being a Christian here, you, we got, we, we've got easy street here. We've got brothers and sisters all around the world, and they're facing this kind of stuff. And so I think a lot of times we don't even bother to pray for these people around the world, and we should. And so we certainly need to pray for the Afghan people. We don't like, I don't like to see anybody suffering the way that, that things are going on over there right now. And so it's really tough. But uh, we want to pray for that. We want to pray for our revival. And uh, uh, so anyhow, let's, uh, let's take the time now. Let's bring the service before the Lord. It'll be a good day today. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for this good day, another day of life you've given to us. And as I've preached all through my preaching years, I've tried to remind people who were sitting under those times, always be thankful for the measure of health you have because it can turn in a moment. It can turn on a dime. And we should be thanking you every day that we are breathing, we're alive, and for the measure of health we have. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your grace, the strength that you give. 
especially in times of trouble and difficulty. Thank you so much for that. Boy, it sure is good to walk with the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you went to the cross, died for us, rose again, and when we put our faith and trust in you, when we know you as Savior and Lord, boy, you sure give us something that we never had before. It's so good and so precious. Thank you for eternal life. Thank you for the abundant life for the way you take care of us. Again, you're just a wonderful, wonderful God. And we bless your name this morning. <coughs> Father, as we think about how good we have it over here right now, it hurts us to think about what our brothers and sisters in the Lord over in Afghanistan are about to have to endure. Lord, it's going to be so hard. I ask you, Father, that you'll give these Afghan Christians boldness in the Lord. God, take away the fear. Give them strong faith. I pray that they'll be as bold as the Apostle Paul was when he went out into difficult terrain, difficult country. People coming against him. He was stoned because he believed in Jesus and he preached the word. Some of these folks may be stoned. Stoning is still done over there. Many of them will probably be executed, if I had to guess, because Islam loves to be head. Many of them may be beheaded. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to have to face, but I pray that you'll give them help, strength, grace, and a boldness to stand up for Jesus. That's what they're going to need. Thank you, Father and Father. Be with their families. Help them. And then I pray not only for the Christians, those who are born again, but those Afghans that are suffering just simply because of being under that type of regime. So help them. Many of them, culturally wise, wise are used to, to, that, to that sort of thing. To a degree. Some will fall right under the Taliban. It won't be that big a deal to them. But many have already tried to get out. And they're still trying to get out because they know what's coming. So Father, we pray for those people who are suffering and hurting. God help them. Help them. Lord, we want to pray. Ask you now for the revival coming up. There's no doubt about the fact that our whole nation needs a spiritual awakening. We keep moving further and further away from you. But we as a church body, we need revival. We need a good, strong, spiritual boost in our lives. We ask you, Heavenly Father, that you would pour one out. One of those old-fashioned type of revivals. When people are getting saved, the saints of God are recommitting, getting, getting rid of those things that are hindering them, the sin that so easily besets them. Father, we ask you just to be with the chariots. Pray that you'll give Brother Paul exactly the messages that are needed right here at this particular time. So we're going to trust you in that. Father, we pray and ask you for a revival. Help us to prepare our hearts. Help us to be ready to be prayed up. We need to be praying, praying, praying over these next three weeks. Lord, then we also want to lift up to you those on our prayer list, you know the names, you know the ones who are struggling. We thank you that Betty Ann did good with her surgery this past Friday. Thank you that she's doing good. We pray for her healing. 
Thank you that Janie's with us today. You're doing a little bit better. We continue to lift her up in prayer. We hate to hear that Miss Catherine Allison in the nursing home has COVID now. We pray for her. We pray for the entire road to the nursing home, Lord. It's bad down there right now. Please be with those residents and help them. Lift them up. Lift their spirits up. And we continue to pray for Dan and Chris. Thank you that they seem to be getting a little bit better. And we pray that you will heal their bodies. We might be able to see them this coming Sunday. Others on our prayer list, Lord, you know who they are. You know the needs. We ask you, Father, just to help them according to your will. Bring healing where that's what you want in their life. But certainly give mercy and grace and help so that they can endure. And then, Lord, be with the church here as they begin to seek a new pastor. We pray for that. We pray that you will guide all the circumstances involved in getting the new pastor here in this church. Give the committee wisdom and guidance. Bless us now as we worship you in song and in word. We praise you. Give you glory for who you are, Jesus, the great, great God of heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do me a favor. Grab your hymnal because there's not going to be anything on the screen. If you'll grab your hymnal, you turn to page 310. 310. I'm going to have to watch the video. I'm not going to welcome everybody online because it ain't working. Okay? So, page 310. If you got it there in front of you, sing with me. Help me out. One, two, and four.
we thank you for those that have come today and Lord, be with those who will not be here today due to traveling and or any other reason. So we just ask that you put in our minds just to give a portion of what you have so graciously given us. Father, we want to we want to ask for your guidance when this time of revival comes coming up. Lord, just to the church to revive our faith. Father, we just want to ask for protection for those in Afghanistan and uh, Lebanon and all other nations for our brothers and sisters of Christ who are living in deep trauma. Father, we ask that you be with Brother Lynn as he brings us the message that you want us to hear. Father, help us to apply in our lives. Father, forgive us Sins are made from here against you. We thank you for the blessings that you bestowed on us. Father, there is one here today who does not know, know you. That's the day they have come down that aisle. I ask you to be in their heart so they can know you as their Lord and Savior. Father, we with this community as this COVID 19 is surging, Lord. Just keep your healing hand upon us and comfort us. We ask all these things in Jesus' sweet, precious holy name. Amen. going to do one and uh, I think this is so appropriate for the times that we're in right now. It is in times like these. We have the hope like a sure and firm anchor of the soul. That's in Hebrews. I got to thinking about it and you out there that uh, have done boating and stuff and know about boats. You know you if, you if you anchor your boat to the root of a tree and the water comes up, what's going to happen? Oh, it's going to sink, right? But the scripture says to anchor our soul on high. If you anchor it up here, water comes up, the flood comes, it just rises on top of it. Amen? In times like these. In times like these.
chapter 4, 1 Peter chapter 4, and I'll read a couple of verses here, and this morning I'm going to conclude this three-part message that we began two Sundays ago, and the message, of course, is titled, When the Darkness Surrounds You, When the Darkness Surrounds You, and this is part three, we'll wrap this thing up today. 1 Peter chapter 4, I want to begin reading at verse 12. If you found your place there in the Holy Word of God, and here's what it says. Peter, speaking to believers who were under super heavy persecution by the Roman Empire. Here's what he says. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are, per if you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed. But on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. For well, the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, and that's true, isn't it? We're, we're just scarcely saved. Where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer According to the will of God, commit their souls to Him in doing good as to a faithful Creator. When the darkness surrounds you, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you so much again for the opportunity to bring this particular part of the message that you have played on my heart three weeks ago. Thank you so much for it does relate to my circumstances and relates to a lot of people here. And we thank you for that. We do ask you, Heavenly Father, that you'll bless your word. Give us clarity, understanding. And I pray, Father, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. For I cannot do anything apart from you, Lord Jesus. So guide and lead. And let us glean from your word today and we will praise you for all you do for us today in feeding us from your word we pray in Jesus name and all of God's people said amen. amen and amen a man visited a doctor one day and he was in a lot of pain and the doctor asked him he says well now where does it hurt and the man said all over Every place that I touch on my body, it hurts. The 
doctor said, okay, touch your shoulder. Ouch. Touch your forehead. Ouch. Touch your thigh. Ouch. Reach down and touch your toes. Ouch. The doctor said, wow. I've never seen anything like that in my entire practice. The man began to sit down. The doctor noticed his hand. He said, let me see your hand. He held his hand over there. He said, ah, there's your problem. You've got a dislocated finger. I think we all know that when pain comes into our life, we've got something going on physically or emotionally. I think we all know that while we may hurt in one particular place, at times we kind of hurt all over, just like that man did right there. You know, if we live long enough, the odds are that sometime in our life we're going to have something that's going to come along and it's going to shape our life to the core. It's going to really shape us up. Now, it may be a, a rather mild tremor that comes through our life at that point in time. And, and uh, next thing you know, it, it's gone. It came to pass. Then again, we may have one of those real big earthquakes. A 7.0 on the Richter scale. And it really brings some shaking. I mean, we're like Elvis. We're all shook up. But not because we're in love. Because we're in pain. We're suffering. Amen? Now, some of us have staggered through the darkness. We've been there, done that. We've had times in the past where we were in that dark tunnel. We had the darkness surrounding us. We were groping. We were trying to find our way out trying to find a little bit of daylight. Some of you may be going through that right now. As I mentioned two Sundays ago, where someone has said we're either in a storm, coming out of a storm, or about to go into a storm. I still believe that's true. But, here's the good news. For the Christian, <laughs> there is super good news. Because... When the storm breaks on our life, we have the true and living God right there with us every step of the way. Amen? We have His presence in our life. We have His power we can rely on. And we have His purpose that we'll be able to see down the road. Praise God for that. You know, the Lord has been leading me to some verses in my own situation. One of them he led, that he led me to was Isaiah 41, 13. And listen to what this verse says. And this is the way God has spoken to me. For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. Now, brethren, that is a good verse in the Bible. Amen? God says, I'll hold your right hand. And so when we're going through stuff, when we have trials, tribulations, difficulty, pain, suffering, listen, place your hand in the hand of the God-man who was from Galilee. But right now, he's at the right hand of the Heavenly Father. Amen? That's all you need to do. Reach out. So we're talking about suffering in this particular message. We've been talking about it. And remember, and I want to share it again. I've done it the last two Sundays. The one truth that must be firmly embedded into your heart and your mind is this. And that is, God is good all the time. Not just when everything looks rosy in your life, but when things are not so rosy. He's still good. And my friend, if you can't, if you can't grasp that, and if it's not a truth to you that you walk in every day, and you know it with your heart and soul and mind that God is good all the time, 
then you're going to be like that man who's trying to row his boat upstream. It's going to be real hard for you when that darkness surrounds you. It's going to be difficult. Now we've already looked over the last two Sundays at ten biblical reasons that we suffer in this world. Ten biblical, we've already covered all that. Now, if some of you, you weren't here, and you would like to, to, uh, to hear those messages, either go on YouTube, follow that with, uh, through Facebook, or you can have Margaret make you a disc. She'd be glad to do it. But we've looked at ten biblical reasons under A, reasons for suffering. Reasons for suffering. And I'm not going to cover those again, but I am going to summarize basically a lot of what they were saying. They're in your sermon notes, so you can just jot these down as I go over them. First of all, number one, everyone suffers in this world. Everyone, because of the curse. Everyone. Number two, Christians have been called to suffer. Just because you're a child of God, don't think you're going to get out of it. Okay? We've been called to suffer. Not only because Christ suffered, but because the world hates Christians. That's why the Afghan Christians are going to suffer. The world hates them. Number three, suffering always involves the purposes of God. In other words, there's a divine reason why we go through the things that we have to go through. Remember, I gave you some examples. Joseph, Job, Paul. And then number four, God's mercy and grace can be found in the midst of suffering. <laughs> yes, it can. And even in chastisement, when God has to spank his own, doesn't matter, his mercy and grace is there because, folks, he loves us. He loves us. In the same way, you are going to spank your children, or correct them. If you've got any of these psychologists out there today, they would come against me today, you know. You don't spank kids today. You might hurt little little Susie or little Johnny, and and uh, their their psychological makeup will be hurt for the rest of their life if you apply the Board of Education to the seat of learning. So you, you don't want to do that. Like I told you last week. I got tore up when I was a kid. It didn't hurt me one bit. I think I'm pretty sound. I believe I've got it all together. Some of y'all might be questioning that. But my wife questions it all the time. But anyway. So we've looked at reasons for suffering. Now let's come to responses to suffering. Everybody responds to trials and difficulty and pain and stuff. Everybody responds in some way. Okay? So let's talk about that. How do most people respond whenever they find themselves in the midst of a storm? Well, here's some of the primary ways, and I like to use the word get. I think that's the key word here. here. Get, G-E-T. First of all, a lot of people get mad. Don't they? they get mad. Boy, they get mad because of their circumstances. They get mad at their doctors or nurses. They get mad at people around. Sometimes they get mad at their spouse. And most of all, they get mad at God. As a matter of fact, when something devastating, they hear it, they know it's in their life, there's a lot of them, and they'll cuss God out that very moment. And he'll take his name in vain. Never heard of yet take Satan's name in vain in a situation like that. But boy, they sure do take God's name in vain. People will get mad. That's one response. Another response is get even. Some people, if, if, they're, if their pain, if the tragedy or calamity happens, because of something somebody else did to them or did to one of their loved ones, their response is, I'm going to get even. They're creating all this pain and heartache. I'm going to get it. Amen? 
There's some people that respond that way. Another response is to get depressed. They begin to get depressed. They begin to spiral downward and they take a swim in that pool of depression. And then there are a lot of people who get worried. <laughs> They've got fear in their heart, their mind, and they get worried. And they go into all the, the they're, they're the, the what if type people. Well, what, what if this happens? Well, what's, what, if, what, if, what if this is going to happen later on in the future? What if? What if? And then there are those that get bitter. And they primarily get bitter against God. Because they blame God and they don't know God. They don't know how He works. So all they can do is blame Him. If they believe in God in the first place. And they get bitter. And sometimes they can get bitter against people around them. And boy, that's a bad place to be. Getting mad, getting bitter are shades of the same thing. Two, two different shades. But the anger and being mad leads to a bitter heart. Let me ask you a question. When the storm breaks in your life, when the heat is on, and when you're thrown into the boiling pot of water, are you an egg or are you a potato? You put an egg in boiling water, what happens? It comes out hardened, doesn't it? It's harder than what it was before. We call them hard-boiled eggs. Okay? They come out hard. But you put a potato in there, and what happens? It becomes soft and pliable and moldable. You see, when God allows you to go through something, He doesn't want you to be an egg. He doesn't want you to come out hard against Him and hard against others. No! He wants you to be like a potato where you're soft and pliable and he can mold and work through that to bring what he's trying to bring to pass. Amen? When we suffer, we need to take a look. That's in your notes. So you can fill them in. First of all, we need to take a look around, don't we? And look around. We need to look around, and if you really start to look at other people that are in pain, suffering, having calamities, you're going to find someone that's a little bit worse off than you are. Amen? My uh, youngest brother has just been diagnosed with lung cancer. And uh, that's bad enough. But he's lost 15 pounds real fast that he did not need to lose in a short period of time. And he says he's still been eating the way he normally does. That's a bad, bad sign. He had a PET scan done Friday. He goes to the doctor on September 1st to discuss what they found. When they, when they do a PET scan, they're looking to see if cancer is everywhere else or anywhere else. Now, I look at my younger brother's situation. My situation is not as bad as his situation. Amen? Go to some of the children's hospitals and see some of those little babies, some of those children that are suffering. You might be able to say, well, maybe I need to have my chin up a little bit more with what they're going through. So we need to take a look around. When we begin to get into calamity and situations like this, we need, need to also look, take a look backwards. Take a look backwards. Think back in your mind and look how God has seen you through all this time and how He's blessed you and been with you all the way. Does that not mean that He is still going to be with you? Just because we've got stuff going on doesn't mean that God has stepped back and said, you on your own, brother. <laughs> Deal with it. He walks with us through it. Amen? I just got through quoting that verse. 
For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. <coughs> Praise the Lord. So, take a look backward. Think about what God has done in your life. He's still working, and He's still working on you. Hallelujah. But then, take a look upward. Don't fail to talk to God. Tell Him all about your troubles. Tell Him about what's going on in your heart. He wants to hear from you. And then finally, take a look forward. Take a look forward. And watch and see what God is going to do. <laughs> He got a purpose. He's still at work. He's at work at work all around us, and he's at work inside of us because we know Jesus. Praise God for that. And so, my friend, he's right there. You can't lose. Amen. I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful that I've got that peace that surpasses all understanding. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I mean, if I didn't know better, I wouldn't even think that I've got cancer. <laughs> but I've got peace, and I'm thankful for that. Now, listen, when the lightning strikes, the storm breaks, the natural responses for a lot of people is shock, questions, what's going on here? What's happening? Some people will go into bewilderment. They don't know what to think. And of course, tears can fall. This, that, that, those responses can happen to Christians or not Christians. Doesn't matter. These are natural, normal responses because we are human beings. But I want you to understand that you're not just a natural person. You are a supernatural person because you know Jesus. Therefore, we have the ability to respond to our adversity in a supernatural way. For example, your fear will give way to faith. Your calamity will give way to calmness. And your questions will give way to trust when you're walking with the Lord. Now, now remember, Peter's writing to these believers and brother, they're under some stuff. They're in storm. They're being persecuted for their faith. And in this passage, he shares three ways that Christians should respond to suffer. Now keep in mind the context is suffering for being a Christian. But I believe it would apply to any kind of suffering we're under because the Bible says we're to glorify God in whatever situation we find ourselves in. Amen? Now first of all, and, and some of you are not going to like this first one, but here's what it is. How should a Christian respond when you've got stuff going on? Number one, be glad. Whoa, somebody said, be glad? you got to be kidding me, preacher. Well, what does the Bible say? Look at verses 12 and 13. Beloved, don't think it strange concerning the fiery trial which has tried you as though some strange thing happened to you. Peter says, you shouldn't be surprised about suffering. Okay. So what do we do? Number 13, verse 13, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering. Did you hear, you hear what Peter said? He said, you guys need to be rejoicing. You need to have a little joy in your heart because you're suffering. In other words, be glad about it. Somebody says, that, that just don't sound right. It may not sound right, but that's what God says. And here's the thing. If Peter was telling them that they need to rejoice, 
and the Spirit of God was leading Peter to tell them that, then that tells me they had the ability to do it. Which tells me God has the ability to cause us to rejoice even in the midst of our difficulty and problems. James says the same thing. James chapter 1. You remember what he says over here in James chapter 1? Listen to what he said. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. He says you got to have joy. Well, well, why, James? Knowing that the testing of your faith is producing patience, perseverance in your life. God's doing something. So James says, count it all joy. Peter says, rejoice. Put them all together it means be glad, doesn't it? Be glad. Of course, I'm doing alliteration here. Number two, bring glory. Bring glory. It's in your notes. Verse 16. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. Peter says, you've got your, you need to glorify God in your suffering. And the Bible says, whether you eat, drink, or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. And so, be glad. Bring glory. Bring glory to God through what you're going through. And then number three, bow gracefully. Bow gracefully. Look at verse 19. Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to Him. Now, what does that mean? It means to be submissive to His will. It means to bow gracefully before the Lord and say, Lord, Thy will be done. Lord, whatever Your will is, it's going to be best for me. I want the best from God. I don't want the worst. God's not going to give me the worst. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So, be glad, bring glory, and bow gracefully to the will of God. That's what he brings out right there. That's the way Christians should respond. Suppose a man drove up to your house every day for 30 days. He got out and he gave you a $100 bill every day. For 30 days. The next day, on the 31st day, or the 1st, whatever the case may be, you see him, he's driving along. He doesn't pull in your driveway. He just drives right on by. You say, hmm, wonder why he didn't stop. Next day, you see him coming down your street. You get out there in your yard on the sidewalk. You're waving down. And he pulls over. And you walk around the driver's side there. There are two ways you can respond to this man. One way is you can say, Sir, I'll tell you what. I want you to know I really appreciate that money that you gave me these last 30 days. That, that $3,000 is going to come in very handy. I, I, I could really use it. And I just thank you so much. You've been so gracious. I appreciate it. And you can respond that way. Or you can walk up there and you can say, Well, I noticed you've been giving me those $100 for those last 30 days. Man, it's been great. And, I, and I, you know, I, But I noticed you passed me by yesterday. And it doesn't look like you're going to stop today. What's the big deal? Where's my money? Amen. You see, every day we enjoy the goodness and the mercy and the blessings of Almighty God. And then one day comes when something negative happens in our life. And so what do we do? Instead of saying, God, you've been so good to me, and I appreciate all that. Instead of doing that, we say, God, you were blessing me real good. Now I got all this negative stuff. What's the big deal, God? Why'd you stop? Where's my money? 
Hello? The truth is, God is still going to be blessing you. Whether it's we perceive it to be negative or not. Remember, Romans 8, 20, all things work together for good to those who love God and those who are called according to His purpose. It's all good. And it's all from God. When the Job family was blindsided by a Texas tornado, and they lost all ten of their children. <coughs> and then after, right after that, Job was smitten with boils all over him, his body. And boy, he was in pain. We had two different reactions from Mr. Job and Mrs. Job. They both reacted differently. Now, we don't know how Mrs. Job reacted after her children were killed. Yep. It doesn't give us that. But it gives us Job's response. What did Job say? The Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm going to tell you what. You've got to have a close walk with God to respond that way. Okay? But we do have Mrs. Job's response after Mr. Job suddenly had all these boils all over him. And he was sitting there in pain and really suffering up a storm. How did Miss Job respond to that? She walked up to him and she said, Sweetie pie, honey pie, bunch. You know I love you. I'm concerned about you. And I know you're hurting. What can I do for you? I, I, I just love you so much. Is that what your Bible says? No. No, that's not what my Bible says. My Bible says that she walked up to him, and I can just see her with her arms folded and maybe her foot tapping real fast. And she says, do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and die. I feel sorry for Job there. He needed a little bit of compassion. He didn't get any. I know she was hurt. And I know she was rocking and reeling from all that had happened. But her response was, you think God is good? You're holding to your integrity? You're going to say he's still good in all this? No, you need to curse God and go ahead and die. Oh, I wouldn't want my wife to say that to you. <laughs> Amen. I don't think you'd want your spouse to say that to you. How many of you know that's the wrong response? Now, there are a lot of people that question whether or not Mrs. Job was a true believer in the Lord. Okay? We don't know for sure. The Bible doesn't tell us. We know Mr. Job was. We don't know about Mrs. Job. I kind of I kinda have in that category where I have a question, okay? I'm not saying she wasn't. I'm not saying she was a believer in the Lord. That's the wrong response. How did Job respond? Again, here's what he said. He, he says, you speak as one of the foolish women speaks. In other words, you're speaking just like a lost woman would speak, Mrs. Job. Shall we, now don't miss this, everybody listen closely. Shall we indeed accept good from God and shall we not accept adversity? And that doesn't mean that Job is saying adversity is bad. Okay? God's good all the time. Job's just pointing out that God is still good. It doesn't matter whether you have blessings coming or whether you have adversity. But I, want, I like what it says. In all this, the Holy Spirit says, Job did not sin with his lips. Amen. There are proper ways to that Christians are to respond to their suffering, and there are improper ways. And if you respond the wrong way, you will not glorify God. You won't glorify Him. And one of the things, and it may very, one of the things He may very well have you be going through, 
Your situation is so that you can bring lots of glory to Him. Finally, let's go to C. Resources for suffering. Now, some suffering may require counseling. But I want to counsel you to go to a Christian counselor. Don't you go to one of these secular counselors. They may have some good things to say, but they're not. God is not in the equation. Okay? Generally speaking, He's not in the equation for them. You go to a good Christian counselor. Go to the Christian bookstore. And find some Christian counselors that maybe have some good books that, that, or, that they've written about your situation. They're going to include scripture. They're going to include God's perspective on things. That's one resource you can use. But our primary resource for suffering is the Word of God. You see, only the Word of God can bring hope, can bring calmness and uh, peace in our hearts. Only the Word of God can do those types of things. And so when the darkness surrounds you, you need God. And the place to find God is right here in the book. That's where you find Him. And I've preached this before. I've told you before. You'll never be any closer to God than you're close, as close as you are to this book. It's all about being in the book. And if you're not in the book, I'm going to tell you right now, you know, you, you, can, you, can, you may say that, well, I'm okay, I'm fine as a Christian. But I'm going to tell you this, if you're not in the book, you're not walking with God. You're simply not walking. You can try to fool yourself, and Satan may fool you, but you are not walking with God if you're not in the book. And that's the problem with a lot of local churches today. We've got a lot of good people. A lot of good people are going to church. They're hearing a sermon on Sunday, but they're not in the Word of God during the week. God has led me to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And many of you probably know those verses by heart. And if you don't, let me just tell you what Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says. It says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. Now, I'm standing on those verses. These are the verses God initially led me to. I'm also, of course, applying Philippians 4. 6 and 7, any of you know those verses. And, of course, God's led me to Isaiah 41, 13. But when I look at Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, I see three things that God is saying to me in my situation. And here they are. Number one, in your bulletin, trust in the Lord's plan. Trust in the Lord's plan. What does it say? Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Well, what are you trusting about God? Well, I'm certainly trusting that He's there, but I'm also trusting in His plan for my life. So trust in the Lord's plan. <laughs> God is bigger. He's got a better plan than I may have. He knows everything that's going on with me and everything that's going to be happening in my future. He sees the future that I don't see. And His plan is awesome because we serve an awesome God. Trust is your greatest ally when you're going through the storm and fear is your worst enemy. You come to the point where you say, Lord, with all my heart, I trust Your plan. I may not understand it all, but I trust Your plan. Plan. It's right. It's right. Amen? Number two, not only trust the Lord's plan, take it to the Lord in prayer. Take it to the Lord in prayer. What does it say? In all your ways, acknowledge Him. And that doesn't mean just acknowledge that He's there. We need to talk to Him. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm taking it to the Lord in prayer. Amen? Amen? <laughs> Folks, listen, 
God's telephone number has not changed. It is still Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. God says, give me a call. Well, I've been online. Amen. You say, well, Pastor, I'm a wreck. I, I've been trying to pray, and I can't seem to pray through this stuff. I'm kind of a wreck. That's okay. That's what I love about Romans 8, 29. That scripture says, when we don't know really how we should pray or what we should pray for, the Holy Spirit helps with our infirmities so that it's the Spirit of God who is praying through us and talking to the Father. We just need to take it to the Lord in prayer. Amen. So, trust in the Lord's plan. Take the Lord in prayer. Number three, travel the Lord's path. Travel the Lord's path. What does it say? It says when you acknowledge Him, He shall direct your paths. Amen? Now, here's the thing. You have to walk with Him, not away from Him. And when you do, and you travel the Lord's path, whichever way it may go, <laughs> He's going to bless you real good. He's going to take care of you all the way. you got to travel the Lord's path. Acknowledge Him. Yield to Him. And say, Lord, I yield to the path you are pioneering just for me. It's right. It's good. I trust you. I love you. I know you're going to take care of me every step of the way. That's it. When you travel the Lord's path. So folks, there you have it. When we talk about suffering, we've, I think, pretty well ran the gamut. We've, we've covered just about everything. We've looked at those ten biblical reasons we suffer. We talked about our responses, what they should be as a believer. And we need to respond appropriately because we want to bring glory to God. And what's our primary resource? The Word of God. That's where you're going to find the Lord. That's where He'll speak to you, just like He's spoken to me through these particular verses. I know he's speaking to my heart and soul in these. <laughs> so let me just close with this little illustration. And we'll close this three-part message. The doctor has a knife. He makes an incision, and you believe. A mother has a knife. He makes an incision, and you believe. Now, what's the difference? They both have a knife, and they both make an incision. I think we know what the difference is. The doctor is cutting on you because he wants to help you, and he wants to bring about a certain amount of healing in your life. He's there to help you by cutting on you. And mother, on the other hand, is cutting on you because he wants to hurt you not help you in any way at all. And so when God comes our way and He says, this is the path I'm taking you on, just remember that the great physician, He is the one that uses that spiritual knife to cut on us in a way that's going to help us. can't lose by walking with God through your plan. Whatever it may be. Well, God bless you for listening this morning. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and then we'll have an invitation. Father, we thank you so much for this, this precious uh, study that we've been in. It was timely for myself, I know that. Thank you, Father, for what we've learned. 
Thank you for speaking to my own heart. Even as I preach these things, you're giving me more encouragement, giving me more help. Thank you for that. What an awesome God you are. And Lord, I pray that these messages have been helpful to this body of Christ. Someone will be able to benefit from the things that we've covered and learned. Help us, Lord. In whatever affliction we may be in, whatever we're dealing with, and, and there's all types of stuff, God, that we deal with in this world. So help us to trust you completely all the way and to always give you the glory through it all. Thank you. Thank you for the way you minister to our hearts in ways that people don't understand. And even giving us that perfect peace, as Philippians chapter 4 says, that peace that surpasses all understanding. And only the child of God can experience that. Unbelievers, they don't have it. What's well, a blessing right there, God? So I sure thank you for that. Now, Lord, I, I don't know exactly what you want to do in this invitation. There may be someone that needs to come to the altar to pray this morning about their situation. Maybe they've got a loved one that's dealing with some stuff. They need to pray for that person. Perhaps someone needs to come to the altar just to pray for the church and the new direction that you're taking her on. Lord, if we have anybody here today that doesn't know Christ as Savior, the invitation is always open for them to come and put their faith and trust in Jesus as their Savior and Lord. That's what we need more than anything else. We need that free gift of salvation. So, Father, if we have anybody that hasn't made that true commitment to you, and say they know they're saved, or they don't know they're saved, then they need to come. And so, Lord, that's that's in your hands. You see the parts, you know where each person is today, where they stand. But if someone needs to come, I pray that they will. And for whatever reason, anybody else needs to come to rededicate, whatever the case may be, then help them. Father, we thank you again for your goodness and love. Have your will in your way during this invitation time. We'll praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you please stand?